Here's a blink. Here's one more. Okay, let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. This is the City of Kent Council meeting, February the 21st, 2019. If you would please stand and join me with the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good. May we bow. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for all the rain you've given us. I think we've had enough, but uh, <laughs> I would like to thank everyone that's attending here tonight and um, ask that our conversations be, in general, good for the city and that we just continue to make Canton grow and, and become one of the best cities in, Can in Georgia. All these things we pray in your name. Amen. 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 Okay. You have the agenda before you here, and uh, I would like uh, like to add uh, to that agenda uh, an executive session for real estate and uh, litigation. Uh, are there any other changes uh, that need to be made to the agenda? Motion to approve the changes. Okay. Second motion. Uh, motion to approve and seconded. Uh, Mr. Grant made the motion. Mr. Goodman seconded the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Okay, all members voting for the motion. Now we uh, will have a public hearing on the amendments to Chapter 106, <laughs> Definitions, and Chapter 113, Impact Fees of the Development Code. Uh, we will open the public hearing uh, <coughs> now and let Mr. Patton first state the uh, uh, case to be heard, the information. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, council members, uh, this is a proposed amendment to uh, Chapter 106 definition, specifically as it relates to impact fees. Uh, the other uh, component is Chapter 113, which is the impact fee ordinance. These amendments are being proposed because the Georgia legislature made changes to the state of Georgia's impact fee laws, and we need to bring our local ordinances into compliance with those changes that the Georgia legislature made with uh, amending some definitions, adding a few definitions, and uh, that necessitated a few uh, extra language changes within Chapter 113. I did give you a paper copy of uh, 113 uh, tonight, there was a failure on my part to include it in the package uh, as it was uh, set up previously. Also, if council uh, wants to uh, see a uh, strike through markup version of uh, both of these proposed uh, ordinance amendments, I can get that to you as well. Okay, now, is this, this takes two public hearings? Yes, sir. We okay. will uh, have a second public hearing. It's been duly advertised in accordance with state law. That second public hearing will be on uh, the third Thursday meeting, March 21st. Okay, this this is on the volition of the uh, the city itself to to do this, so there's not a, a separate ap applicant. So I would uh, ask that there, if there's anyone in support of this amendment, other than I'm assuming the city, uh, uh, now's your time to voice uh, your thoughts. Okay. Anyone in opposition to this? It's more administrative bookkeeping, anyway. I think. I have but, a question, Mayor. Yes, ma'am. I think there's certain things that um, impact fees they're restricted for certain areas, and I I just glanced through this. I didn't see that listed. That they impact fees can only be used for for certain areas. There's some things they cannot be used for. Uh, we have, uh, if you'll recall, uh, there is a separate capital improvements element mm -hmm. that is a part of our comprehensive plan that uh, spells out specific projects uh, that are to be uh, used in upgrades using the impact fee funds. Right. We do have a uh, 
if you will, a citywide district and not a north district, south district, uh, anything of that nature. So the funds would be allocated uh, as council sees fit citywide, but uh, for those projects that are contained within our capital improvements element of our comprehensive plan. Seems to me like there are seven areas that in which you could use impact fees to upgrade the infrastructure. Some things you cannot use it for, like schools. I think that roads you can, and roads water uh, is and those acceptable. Kinds of uh, parks, recreation, mm -hmm. uh, public safety, which is police, fire, mm -hmm. libraries is acceptable. You can actually do a water uh, impact fee, a sanitary sewer impact fee. State law does not allow an impact fee assessment for schools. Right. Okay. Uh, we've given the opportunity for those in favor and in those in opposition to this, uh, these amendments. So we'll open it now for the, the council to uh, ask questions before we actually uh, close the public hearing. If there are any questions or comments. Anyone? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> then uh, we will close this public hearing and we will have the next public hearing at our work session? No. Or the next one? When will the next one be? Mr. Mayor, we've advertised it for the third Thursday meeting, March 21st. State okay. law specifies that uh, the two public hearings have to be over two weeks apart. So we couldn't do one the 7th and the 21st. That's why it's here tonight. And okay. we'll come back on the 21st. Okay. The next one, March 21st. Thank you, Ken. Okay. Item A, <clears throat> discussion of, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we have guests and visitors. And then uh, item, item A, January UCR reports and employee recognitions. Chief, Chief Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor, Council, City Manager. We've got uh, several employees to recognize this evening. If I can have first officer Gary Pruitt step forward, please. Face out. Okay. Officer Pruitt um, is a new, uh, one of our newest uh, police officers hired as uh, for to be a police officer. He'll be sworn in uh, as such next Wednesday, I believe it's the 27th. Um, over in the municipal court. He comes to us with a year of law enforcement experience out of Somerville, Georgia. I believe that's the hometown of our city manager. <laughs> and uh, uh, we feel very certain that uh, Officer Pro is going to be an excellent fit for the department and our community. <coughs> Once uh, sworn in, he will join the FTO field training program after that. So welcome, sir, to the, to the department. Next, uh, we have a new administrative assistant for our operations bureau, Ms. Gabriela Gonzalez. Step forward, please, ma'am. Ms. Gonzalez uh, comes to us um, with uh, numerous years in administrative experience and is actually a uh, English as a second language teacher um, certified. Um, and we feel very certain that uh, she's going to be an excellent fit for the agency and for our community and, and uh, will be a great ambassador for our Hispanic community. So. Um, she's going to be working in our operations bureau, which uh, houses our uniform patrol division, and also going to be very active in our social media uh, programs. Welcome. <laughs> and last but not least, Sergeant Hoffman, if you could step forward. Right here, sir. Front and center, sir. You've got to be in the middle. You've got to be front and center. 31 years with the agency. Um, Sergeant Hoffman served diligently, uh, served with the utmost integrity, um, and is the epitome of what we said last Friday on the 15th uh, during a retirement ceremony at the police department um, that epitomizes servant leadership. Um, he was always willing to help, always there for others, and uh, served uh, here recently before his retirement with our Office of Professional Standards, where he has done us an excellent job. Um, many of the officers that we have in our department now are because of his background investigations, um, and, and, and he is acting as acted as a mentor uh, for many, many of the officers. I can't remember a time that I didn't go by his office where he would have one of our younger officers in, um, and he's just talking to him about life, not just about the job, 
but about life, what's going on personally with them, what's going on professionally with them. Um, and I, I, I'm a 100% believer when supervisors take the opportunity to talk to young people and mentor them, that is how people stay at an agency. That's how they fall in love with an agency, and that's how they take pride and are very proud in the organization that they belong to. So Sergeant Hoffman over the years has been a huge piece of that, and he's going to be sorely missed for 31 years with the Kent Police Department. So um, he uh, received a shadow box, very nice, um, last week, and uh, one of his service weapons uh, was uh, great for him, but I've got a little something for him. This is not definitely not enough for 31 years. It's just something that um, an acrylic uh, an award, basically in recognition of your over 31 years of dedicated, loyal, and diligent service to the police department and Canton community. And this has our creed in there. Thank you for your attitude of service, your mindset of community, and heart of protection to, during your noble career in this law enforcement profession. Service of October the 2nd, 1987 through February 15th, 2019. Sergeant Scott Hoffman. report real quick. Congratulations and, and thank you very much for all you have uh, done for the city of Canton. We appreciate that very much. Okay. You have, I'm sorry. I thought you were through. I'm sorry. I can't be if you want me to, sir. Uh, okay, carry on. No, just uh, just uh, real, real quick uh, crime report. Um, you had, have it there before you uh, in your packets. Uh, calls for service in January 2019 were uh, a little over 1950 at 1964, 77 arrests, and you see the others. Uh, total traffic contacts uh, with our officers are 451. Uh, Mary's concern, as we do every month with our data, we had uh, 17 cases of entering auto. Many of those were uh, from the two individuals that came here um, from the, uh, the Cobb uh, area, Atlanta area, and committed uh, most of those crimes to which our, our detectives did a great job of apprehending them and, uh, and charging them with those crimes. So, um, second was our theft by taking, which was uh, 14 uh, different incidents. Uh, there was really no pattern around the city. 113 accidents, which I know you can would be, feel hard to believe that a lot of that attributed to a rain. Um, so, uh, we've had a lot of accidents the past couple of days with a lot of the rain that we've that we've had. So. Um, and then we've got some uh, traffic selective enforcement strategies uh, here coming, I believe, next next week. Um, community events, we've uh, conducted most of those except for our Facebook Live event we'll have on the 25th. Uh, we just had a um, community uh, uh, annual recruitment plan presentation that was a big success with uh, many of our community leaders this past Monday night. And we'll have some more announcements coming about a uh, recruitment expo next month. And then uh, we are working right now on annual, our annual 2018 annual report, which hope to present to you on March the 7th. So um, the FBI statistics, just real quickly, um, as you can see, they had total property crimes of 62, um, 83 total crimes between property and then violent crimes. And then again, our total, total, you see our total calls for service and our traffic contacts there. So anyone have any questions? Any questions? Thank you for your time. I'm, I'm done, sir. I won't. Now? Okay. <laughs> I guarantee you won't see me again. So. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate Good it credit. very much. Okay, you have in your agenda package the uh, minutes from the February 7th, 2019 uh, meeting. Are there any corrections or changes to be made to those? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Mr. Grant made the motion to approve. Uh, Mr. Yon seconded the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members vote for the motion. Okay, our 10 minute public input. Uh, Melissa Harbors. Uh, I just want to begin by saying I did not read the agenda before writing this, so my sincere apologies if they're out there, so they probably won't hear it. So, uh, February 14th, 2019, at 200 Rose Ridge Drive, a swarm of police stormed the house and arrested the owner. While the isolated incident isn't of significance, a quick internet search shows how dire of a situation it is to the city of Canton. 
Robert G. Tippins, owner of 200 Rose Ridge Drives, has a significant criminal record in Cherokee County going back to 1994. Available research shows that he has received minimal consequences, even though his charges are substantial. On March 12th, he was arrested for possession of Schedule A controlled substance, a felony charge possessing oxycodone and methamphetamine. Mr. Tips, Mr. Tippins received only five years probation, a thousand dollar fine, and 120 hours of community service. During his five year probation, he was arrested twice. Mr. Tippins received only 10 days in jail and an additional six months probation. Six months to the day of the 2012 felony, on March 13, 2018, he was arrested again for simple battery and family violence. For this offense, he received only 24 months probation. On 2019, I'm sorry, February 19th of 2019, according to case number 1917363, Robert Tippins was arrested for obstruction of law enforcement officers and again for the possession of a Schedule II controlled substance, methamphetamine. It is apparently well known that the Tippins family has been influential in Cherokee County and the city of Canton. Without the reputation of his family, a criminal with this substantial of a rap sheet would not have received the same leniency that has been given to his defense. Council members. How many times do I have to see police next door arrest people then give minimal consequences? How many times is DFAX going to knock on my front door to ask me about the safety of the children next door? Why do I have to run Sorry, from my driveway to my house in fear? Because I don't have the faith that this city's police or justice system is doing best to provide safety to its law-abiding citizens. I'm scared to let my dogs in my own backyard. I sleep next to two loaded guns when my husband travels because I fear that a drug deal had gone back and happened just a few hundred feet away from where I sleep. I have lost faith in that this city's ability to protect me as a citizen or there will be, have to be bloodshed or a loss of life before real action is taken. Council members, I finish by asking, where does the protection of the Golden Boys Club end and the safety of this city's residents begin? Thank you. Uh, would, it, would it be possible, I didn't get every word of that, I'm sorry you've had to go through that, but would it, would it be possible for us to get a copy of that or let some of the staff make a copy so we could really look at it? You can have it. <laughs> yeah, and if we, if we could do that, I mean, I'd like to, I'd like, yeah, I, I don't know if it's my hearing or what, but I didn't get every word and I'd like to look at it. Right, it was too yeah. muffled, I couldn't hear it. But thank you for your comments, we appreciate that. We'll, we'll take a look at that for sure. Okay, next item, consent agenda. Uh, I will read each of these, and if there's any of them that uh, you, any, any one that you would like pulled off for further discussion, we, we will do so. Uh, item A, approval of proposed impact fee fund budget amendment. Uh, that's what Nathan, our chief financial officer, discussed last month. Appro uh, approve, uh, last meeting, approval of payment of bluffs, common assessment, uh, area assessment fee. Uh, item C, approval of 2019 health insurance renewal. Item D, approval of planning commission recommendation on the adoption of Canton zoning map and correcting previous mapping errors on the, on the zoning map. And item E, approval of alcohol license application for Parada's Pizza, 149 Reinhardt College Parkway, Suite 1, Canton. Uh, the pr proposed outlet manager is Gina Parada. Um, are there any, uh, any of those you would like taken off for further discussion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. I have a motion. Uh, Ms. McGrew made the motion. Ms. Wilson seconded that motion. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. Okay. Uh, under old business, discussion and possible action of phase two of community signage and wayfinding. Uh, uh, communications and Outreach Director Angela Thompson is there. Uh, I don't know, you have something new you want to add or anything? Or? I, I, in the packet, you'll see the total for okay. that we're requesting. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, I pointed to the screen, but you have oh. it in front of you, hopefully. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, it's the total price with installation. It's 240500 240 did you say? Yes, sir. Okay. Any, any questions or comments on that? Mr. Goodman? Do you have a general idea of when they, if this is approved, which it probably will, when it would be started? 
Uh, what this would, if it's approved tonight, we would give the go-ahead to the vendor, and it would take them probably three to four months to build them, and then to install may take another two months to get everything in. Six months. Six months. Before Christmas. Yeah. That's what I, I had asked uh, two weeks ago when Sky was here. I asked them how long we should anticipate, and he said, if, she said if we can get approval, six months is the, okay. the bulk of it. Thank you. Hopefully, as long as vendors, everyone has the supplies and everything. Mr. Grant? On the uh, five park signs, are those, I know we discussed last meeting that some of them may be the smaller ones. Is this the five? These are the five that will remain the same size. This does not include Cannon Park that we would treat differently. Okay. Does it include Brown Park? It does include Brown Park, yes, sir. Anyone else with a question? So how is the how are the how would this be paid for? With hotel motel tax, and I've spoke with. Our well, which tax, Floss? Do you say what? Hotel motel. Hotel motel tax. Okay. And I anticipate bringing back a budget amendment to cover this cost. Okay. Uh, next month or month after. Okay. Now, the, the, are they paid for as you receive them, or you have to pay so much up front? Do you know? It, I, if it's treated the same way as our city hall signage project was, they will. They, I believe, it asks for twenty percent up front for supplies, okay. and then they'll once they the fi we pay in increments. Yeah. Okay. Now, is that 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 includes the installation? Yes, sir. But it does not include any power or uplighting that okay. we had discussed. Yeah, but it does include installation. Yes. Other than that, okay. Okay. Anyone, Miss Grant? I think we had also discussed uh, at the last meeting that due to the scheduling of these, some of these may go into the next year's budget, or is it, that was just a possibility? We are going to try to get everything actually done in this budget. Okay. That's, that is our, I'm sorry. sorry. I, I was just going to say, ultimately, in the hotel tax fund, you know, we're not as compressed mm -hmm. from year-to-year -year spending. So, you know, whether we get them all in this year or not, it won't right. really matter. It's all covered by that. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Um, Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Yon made the motion to approve. Mr. Grant seconded that motion. Any other discussion? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. Let's get them up. <laughs> okay. Uh, item B under open discussion. Possible action of resolution to adopt the annual update to capital improvements plan and five year STWP of Horizon 2030 comprehensive plan for impact fee program yes sir mr. mayor council members uh, the, we are proposing city council uh, approve the resolution to adopt this is the annual update which is a requirement of Georgia's impact fee laws as it relates to our uh, five-year short-term work plan and capital improvements uh, project within the packages uh, you received yeah, you did uh, see the letters from Georgia DCA and uh, Atlanta Regional Commission that we're uh, in compliance with the requirements. Uh, so the next step is to uh, adopt, send the resolution and the adopted CIE and uh, all back to ARC and DCA. Okay. Any questions or comments? Motion to approve the resolution. Okay. Second. Uh, Mr. Grant made the motion to approve the resolution. Mr. Goodman seconded the motion. Any other discussion? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. Item C, discussion and possible action of the Planning Commission recommendation for cases E1812-001. The applicant is Michael Ellis, and the and, uh, owner is Mountain, Mountain Reserve LLC. A proposed rezone of 26.55 acres located along Bells Ferry Road. Applicant proposes a rezone subject property from R10 to R4. Um, okay. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. Uh, uh, there was a public hearing uh, conducted before the uh, Can Planning Commission. Can Planning Commission recommended approval with the following conditions. Minimum lot size shall be 7,150 square feet. Minimum house size shall be 2,000 square feet. Mayor and council consider a 30-foot buffer along lots 1 through 17 and 27 
through 32 as requested by Cherokee County in their letter dated January 2nd, 2019. I'm okay. here to answer any questions uh, you might have in regards to this. Do you know, has there been any traffic study on the, in that area of Bells Ferry in recent times or? None that I'm aware of. Uh, I it's getting have, busy there, I can tell you. I have not heard uh, from uh, Jeff Morton at the county as to whether the county has done a, a traffic study in that area. Uh, there's only approximately 190 feet of uh, road frontage in this general area that uh, city limits is on both sides of the road. Uh, the bulk of uh, Bells Ferry in that area is Cherokee County. So uh, I can uh, certainly contact the county, see if they've done a traffic study but uh, we did not uh, receive any information or input from the county relative to a traffic study being done. Okay. The, uh, I, personally, I think we almost need one. I know some people are having a hard time getting out of their driveway uh, a little, little further, I guess, north on Bells Ferry there, uh, trying to get out and uh, turn left. It's almost impossible at certain times of the day. Um, I think, uh, I guess the thing that concerns me as much as any, and yet it's a calculated uh, measure, is sight distance there. Uh, uh, coming north on Bells Ferry, there's a dip, there's a, a hill there, and it looks like it's very difficult. Uh, a car could be down in the hole turning left and one coming north on Bells Ferry. But, uh, you know, if there were, you have an axel d cell lane, which I assume may be done and possibly even uh, as was requested by uh, the young lady who was here the last time, mm -hmm. uh, a center turn lane. I don't know if that will be done or not. But uh, also the, the, recent, the recommendation of a 30-foot buffer between city and county property, that is uh, we just adopted a policy of 50 feet back, uh, I don't know when, a couple, three months ago or something like that, or maybe as longer than that. But it's been a while. I'm not sure. mistaken. That uh, adoption was in September. Oh, it's been longer than I thought. Then, okay. Uh, from between any time the city comes up to county, county property, uh, part of the uh, county recommendation too was that that uh, uh, the uh, developer actually would donate or dedicate right away on Bells Ferry Road whatever it took to have 40 foot from the center line to the, to the property line, the length of the, and, and, it, and I don't know, it may already be 80 feet. I don't know what the right of way is on Bell's Ferry now, but if it's 80 feet, then it's probably, you know, that's already there, I guess. Uh, but I think it, that was part of the recommendation of, of the county at that time and that a right of way deed uh, be uh, you know the, the right of way be deeded to the to the county or city now, uh, prior to any land disturbance per permit. They also re requested underground utilities, uh, requested decorative street light posts and landscaping consistent with overlay zoning standards. Uh, that would be along Bell's Ferry Road. Uh, that's that was the county recommendation. I mean, you know, we could say that, you know whatever our city or county overlay zoning standards are, we could do that. They recommended uh, planting one three or three and a half inch uh, diameter shade tree in the front yard. Um, I was talking to Ken earlier and I thought if you plant one in the front yard, you plant one in the backyard. And uh, if that front one get, has to get cut down, which is what's happening a lot, you still got one tree there, you know? And, and apparently the roots are some of them on these small lots are getting into sewer lines and all, <clears throat> you know, so that's something we need to think about. And also, I would say in a, regarding bonds, and, and this is uh, in addition to normal performance bonds that are required for the streets, uh, and this was, this was uh, also from the county recommendation, performance bonds shall be required for any uncompleted amenity which has been approved and commenced construction, but not yet completed at the time of any certificate of occupancy. So, I mean, that's something to think about. These are, these are things that uh, kind of compiled out. But I, 
I'm still concerned about traffic study and, uh, you know, the sight distance and so forth. I guess that's as much as anything. Um, comments, Mr. Grant. Mr. Patton, could you confirm, I think there's still some confusion or maybe it's just me, but uh, if that part where that entrance would be is in the city or the county? The proposed entrance uh, would be in what would be considered city because the property directly on the other side of Bells Ferry Road from that proposed entrance is property that is also inside the city limits. And based upon everything that I've ever uh, known or seen uh, relative to roads, annexation of properties, if the city owns property on both sides of the road, uh, that section uh, would be uh, within the city. And you said 190 feet Approximately 190 feet is what I uh, uh, measured off of the uh, city's uh, GIS uh, from uh, city property line to city property line for uh, both sides of Bells Ferry. So that's 190 feet on Bells Ferry and then the county starts or is it... Or is yes, that 190 sir. feet in between the two? No, there's county on both sides of that 190 feet. Hmm. Okay. So the A cell, D cell lanes would actually be the responsibility of the county? Hmm. Well, uh, I would uh, tend to think that if city council uh, is inclined to uh, approve, they could have a condition relative to uh, complying with engineering requirements uh, a cell, D cell, left turn lane, that would be uh, determined by city engineers as well as uh, county engineers. I have a, I have a question about the 30-foot <coughs> buffer. What is the rationale that, that uh, we should consider a 30-foot buffer as opposed to the 50-foot buffer that we have uh, on record? Uh, Planning Commission uh, basically... Uh, wanted to uh, abide by uh, the recommendations of Cherokee County. Uh, the Planning Commission did have uh, discussions at length relative to the 30-foot versus uh, the 50-foot buffer. Uh, the applicant uh, indicated that 50-foot buffer uh, would uh, basically uh, make those lots unbuildable. Staff doesn't think that's the case, but... Uh, Part of the main reason uh, in discussions at the Planning Commission was uh, trying to be in agreement with something that the county had recommended. Okay. The uh, Excel and Decel lanes, uh, would those go into, how, how long did you, did you say 40 feet or, would those go into the county? Most likely, there probably would be a little bit of extension into a uh, county. Generally, uh, uh, you're looking at a uh, 150-foot uh, acceleration lane. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, GDOT uh, has uh, gotten away from uh, deceleration lanes per se. But uh, uh, generally, it's 150-foot with a 50-foot taper for a 200-foot maximum. Mm -hmm. So it's going to, it would, uh, one or the other, I mean, if that driveway is in the center of that property, which I don't know if it'd be, it would be in the center, access be in the center or one shifted one side or the other, or the other, then it is very likely that, or it's possible that additional right-of-way might have to be obtained from someone who doesn't own the property. <laughs> I mean, from, from the, the de developer not own the property, some, some, have to get it from somebody else. Would that? Well, they uh, I mean, possibly uh, could uh, dedicate additional right of way uh, within uh, their site. As you had talked about, uh, some of the uh, uh, conditions of zoning approval with the original annexation zoning from 2005 that you were reading about of the additional 40 feet that could accommodate uh, additional right of way for their frontage. Whether that's going to be long enough uh, for a uh, acceleration lane uh, coming out of the development. It appears that it is approximately uh, 178 uh, or 179 uh, lineal feet 
or so from uh, the southerly edge of the entrance road to the property corner along Bells Ferry Road. Uh, what about the desale lane? Uh, appears that there's a uh, 211 feet. Uh, I thought, did you, how, how many feet across the front of the front of this property? Well, what I measured off a of GIS system was approximately 190 feet, according to the survey plat. 211, 316, uh, almost 400 feet. Oh, okay, well, that, that's different than 100. What I thought was 190. Okay. If it's over 400 feet on that property, then I guess there was, there's probably uh, enough room to do that, you know. But did I understand that only 190 of those feet would be city and the, the balance would be county? Was that my understanding? Well, that was uh, from uh, measurements taken off of GIS this afternoon. Uh, I would tend to think that uh, the city portion of the right away is going to be closer to this 400 feet is shown on uh, the boundary survey within the zoning application because the property uh, on the other side of Bells Ferry Road uh, is uh, pretty much a, a straight line across Bells Ferry Road to the other property. Whatever part of you. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone else? And if I might could add, Mr. Mayor, uh, as uh, you were reading some of the things out of... Uh, the uh, original uh, ordinance for the old zoning case Z0501-001. There was a, a list of conditions such as the additional right-of-way, uh, the uh, uh, streetscapes uh, requirements interior to the subdivision, that sort of thing. Uh, council certainly uh, could look at... Uh, those conditions if you're inclined to approve with those conditions make change for instance condition number one subject shall property be zoned r2 uh, you could uh, amend that to r4 uh, minimum lot size whatever uh, council agrees to this uh, set of conditions uh, did show 42 lots maximum this application proposes 44 lots um, it uh, contains uh, the 2,000 square foot minimum home size I just throw that out for consideration purposes I believe that uh, all of the council members uh, had previously been provided a copy of these original conditions on an approval did those site did that site plan show the XLD cell lanes It shows some uh, additional right of way. It doesn't. Uh, doesn't show any lanes coming off of there. It shows some additional right of way, but it doesn't uh, reflect uh, so how much probably enough for. Uh, how much additional right of way are they showing there? Can you tell? Not 40 feet, I can tell you that. Well, no, 40 <laughs> feet from the center line. Okay. So I don't. See, if, if there's 80 foot right of way on Bell's Ferry, they don't have to give any. The way I read that, it's got to be from, you know, well, I think what they were saying was whatever the right of way is, they want to make sure there's 40, at least 40 feet from the center line. That's this what uh, rezoning site plan does not reflect additional okay. right of way for the uh, entire length of the property fronting along Bells Ferry. Okay. Now, we are talking about approving just the zoning. We are not approving the site plan. Or that is correct. So that would be a whole different animal going through a whole different process and come back. Oh, well, the site plan no. would not come back. Uh, that would, would come go back. through administrative uh, approval uh, with uh, staff, engineers, county, water, sewer, that sort of thing. Okay. It looks like most of the property adjacent is already R4. Hmm. There is a existing R4 to the north and a little to the northeast. Uh, this Either property uh, or backs up to Canton Heights subdivision, which runs south off of Highway 20, and uh, that is zoned R4. But on either side 
of this property, which is not in the city, uh, it's zoned what? R40? Or? I'm not sure if uh, the county has R40. I believe that's what it, uh, the zoning is for the county property on either side. Uh, when we listened to the opposition, uh, the lady mentioned that most of the lots around here were like one acre, and it looks like most of them are around this way, except for yeah. the area at Canton Heights is one acre. Property on uh, both sides of the subject property in the county is on bar 40. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Somehow or another, I think we need, if, if it was possible, to take this another step before we go in and maybe put together, have staff put together a, a, a recommendation incorporating as many as this council would like of these uh, conditions that were placed on it with the county uh, uh, and, and I guess the city too. So, I mean, do we want a 50-foot buffer uh, consistent with our policy? Mm -hmm. or, or do we want to, I mean, if if staff believes they could still do the project in the 50 versus 30. And I don't know why we wouldn't stick with our, our uh, exists our adopted policy on that one. Um, I also think it would be good to wait for a good traffic study of that area because that is a, a major well, it, it is. It is that. Is somebody going to do? Is there a traffic study? Has the traffic study been ordered? Isn't is that? Do you, we require that for a driveway permit? I mean, somebody's got to determine whether these things are needed, whether left lane needed, or lanes needed, and that's based on traffic into the project. Not a when you say traffic study, right? You're talking about counting cars, and that's right. May not be what we have. That's really not what we normally look at. What we would look at is the number of cars turning in and out of this subdivision. Okay. And then it's a road with a certain number of miles per hour. So those are two different things. But should but shouldn't we look at that traffic on there? Because if that traffic is packed up, and and cars are coming in and out of there, particularly out of there, and and creating uh, additional cars on the road, I don't know. I would think we'd need to need to look at the numbers of vehicles on that well, road too. But but that but that has nothing to do with whether it needs a turn lane. Or a diesel lane, or an ace. That's that's the number of cars going in that dictates that traffic study of saying maybe you don't want the development at all because there's so much traffic there. That's a different question. But the traffic study counting the cars would not tell us whether to put a left turn lane there or not. Normally, it's about the traffic going in. Mm -hmm. Meaning, are there enough left turn lanes, left turns going into the development to require it to get out of the normal flow of traffic? Right. Well, not, not just to whether there's enough, but whether or not you can see that vehicle. Well, sight lines are a different question. That's not a traffic study. We would want, we would require sight lines. I mean, that's, there. I mean, everybody that builds a subdivision goes through these questions. Sure. Before we let them put a driveway in onto a city street. So some of these are just normal process, I guess. So how did that happen up at uh, Laurel Canyon, that sight distance on that one up there? It may go through the process, but sometimes it gets lost. Well, you could make it a condition that sight line, that, that if not normally done, that the driveway not be permitted without proper sight distances. Generally, through the uh, construction plan process, uh, engineers uh, will look at the proposed entrance onto the roadway. Uh, they can uh, determine if there is a sight distance problem and come up with a remediation for that site distance. Uh, same for uh, traffic volume. We have uh, staff members uh, capable of uh, doing uh, uh, traffic counts to uh, make a determination if a uh, left turn lane northbound Bells Ferry would be required. 
I think we've been requiring that from developers lately in the last few years, it seems to me. Doing uh, traffic a, counts. a center turn lane? Well, just the traffic counts to determine. Oh, the traffic counts, yeah. Well, generally, a traffic time. study uh, is usually not uh, required for a subdivision of 44 units. Traffic studies, generally, you're looking at uh, 100 units yeah. or a larger. Multi-family. When we've done them in the past, it's to determine whether other system improvements are needed because what the traffic study tells you is that intersection now is overloaded. You need to have turn lanes down there. And so it doesn't really tell you anything about a particular, especially a small subdivision, because what you're counting in the traffic study is how much more traffic's being added mm -hmm. to Bells Ferry. You already know there's a lot of cars on Bells Ferry. So if you wanted to know the impact of adding 44 lots, that's what the traffic study would tell you. But that's really telling you whether we need to put a traffic light down at the intersection or, or whatever. Not so much about whether you need a left turn lane or decel right. or acel lanes. I just want to make sure we're not mixing those up and requiring a traffic study that's not then going to answer the question you're really struggling with. Yeah, I, I tend to tend to agree. I mean, I think there are other questions around this rezoning that, I mean, I don't feel comfortable that I have the clarity of, of uh, uh, the factual information and also the proximity to the county. And I would agree the 50-foot buffer that we just dropped it, adopted in September you know, as a standard, um, I mean, it hasn't been that long since September, but but uh, if our staff feels that it's not necessary to reduce that, I, I have a question about that, and I wouldn't want to reduce it if, you know, it wasn't totally necessary. Um, I, I mean, out of uh, respect for the developer, I mean, I would like to have some more clarities of, on the, on some of those items, and I wonder, Mr. Patton, would it be possible to get a little clarity by the work session in, in March, or with which questions? The need for a left turn lane. I think the left turn diesel, lane. Uh, to me, the, the lanes and and you know if those go into the county, and then what you know what happens there. Um, I mean, I, I did drive over there a couple times uh, in the past couple of weeks, and I mean, it is, I do have the same concerns as the mayor about this side distance and the hill there, and I think the curve. I mean, you you could just require a left turn lane. I mean, you don't, whether it's needed or not, I mean, whether the engineering, mm -hmm. you could just make it a condition that there be a left turn lane and that the developer dedicate enough right of way to do that, because it will require, it may require more right of way to be able to make the room for a left turn lane. So that could just be a condition of your approval, that it can only be built with a left turn lane into the subdivision. Mm -hmm. You can also make a, a condition that it uh, not be approved at the site line, site distance, basically requiring the engineer to approve any driveway, including site distances, if that's not normally done. So those can be conditions of approval if that's what you're saying is that you would want that. And one of the conditions is that we approve a 30-foot buffer rather than a 50-foot buffer. So we could omit that if we wanted to. Right. I, I think there's just so many con prior conditions and new conditions that probably just somebody needs to put something in front of you. But I, I think you've given Mr. Patton enough indication you don't want to do the 30-foot. So if he was preparing a list, he could do that. Um, all the things the mayor read up, was that from... The prior zoning, or was that from the that county? Was, that was from the county, yeah. But when, when the city when annexed it and zoned? Yeah. That's from the city's prior zoning, right? Yes. So, I mean, we could just say we, we're going to adopt all those prior conditions except those in conflict with Wait. the new conditions, conditions. And so, so that we don't let things fall through the crack. So you don't have to know them all, but um, or somebody can go through and see which ones are still relevant and which ones aren't based on the changes. I feel like y'all are just struggling with too many. I, t I tell right you what, now, to be able to, to make do. a motion. <laughs> yeah, what we, what I think we need to do is, and I think we could we can table this, can't we? For yes. if we need to One do time, that. Yeah. But let's, uh, 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 Mr. Grant, uh, um, let's see here, and and I and Mr. Peppers. How about if we meet and and pull this together and then bring it back to the council at the work session uh, as a as a as a proposal. For consideration at that time. 
so we can decide which one to want. Uh, we, uh, Mr. Estes as well would be in that. The three, uh, Mr. Grant, Mr. Estes, Mr. Peppers, and myself. How about if we do that as a committee to take a look at this particular one and come back? I'm fine with that. So, yeah. so I make a motion to delay okay. to the, mm -hmm. and we would do that by the March 1st session? Yes. Oh, yes. I wouldn't want to delay it any Hopefully further. Hopefully do it the next week or so. Yeah. I'd make a motion to delay until the March work session, until that committee has a chance to review. Second. Okay, the motion, Mr. Grant uh, made the motion. Uh, Mr. Estes seconded the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, council members. Thank you. Okay. Uh, item D, I believe. Discussion possible action on task order one from <laughs> Black and Deach for conceptual design services for a new water uh, tank and booster pump station in Laurel Canyon. Well, we, Back again. Yes, we've, we've talked about this quite a bit. Um, one thing I want to point out, this, this isn't a Laurel Canyon tank. It is actually for the city system. Um, the, the biggest thing, aside from providing additional storage for the Laurel Canyon area, it will allow the city to take down the Great Sky Tank for maintenance. Um, that tank was installed in 2002. Um, we haven't done anything to it yet. Um, Utility Services, which is, does all our uh, tank maintenance, when they did their initial inspections in 2012, recommended, um, I think they recommended interior and exterior renovations be done in 2014 which was, you know, blast, sandblasting, painting, disinfecting, everything like that. We haven't done any of that. We can't take it out of service um, until we get something else in place. Um, the, o the other thing that's, that's critical, aside from just um, residential water supplies, fire protection. Um, we just want to make sure we have adequate fire protection at the back end of Laurel Canyon. So, Move to approve. Second. I have a motion to approve in a second. Do we have any other questions? I would I would just ask a question. What were they thinking about when they did that tank and didn't have any way to uh, drain it and repair it? What were they thinking at that time? Um, I that was before my time. I know I know yeah. it was before. I just thought <laughs> you being an engineer, you'd probably know how they yeah. think. Well, I, yeah, I, I I don't have an answer for that one. <laughs> okay. They weren't thinking. Uh, Mr. Grant? And, and thank you for clarifying, you know, the, the system benefits. Mm -hmm. um, I understand those, but I still have a, a little problem, you know, with the previous, you know, agreement that was in place from the developer. While I understand <coughs> it'll service our system well to be able to clean a great sky station, I think the tank itself will, will primarily yeah. benefit that uh, development. Um, and if we had a, uh, an agreement there before, I just feel like we're walking away from money on the table. And I feel like if we, <clears throat> if we prove this and go forward with it and we come up with a design plan that assuming the city is going to pay for it, I mean, we have no negotiation power at that time. Um, I don't know if there's been any other meetings with the developer or anything. We, we've had just one. Um, we didn't get into a lot of details other than the donation of a, a property. Mm -hmm. And, but as I understand from that one meeting that they were open to some contribution. I don't know if it was limited to property. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I would just wish we had some clarity on that before, you know, we start spending money mm -hmm. on, on it. Uh, again, I understand the system benefits, but, but, um, I have some concern with, with that, that we're just walking away from substantial, you know, partnership yeah. from that development, which will benefit well, greatly yeah, yeah. from that future yeah. development in, yeah. in Law I, I know, unfortunately, that, you know, aside from everyone on that original agreement being defunct and it expired in 2015, so, you know. Has anyone, has anyone gone back and looked at the minutes of the meeting in which meetings in which it was discussed about that tank and the, the responsibility for them to build that tank and why we decided as a council at that time, because I think that happened in, in the 2000 and 
eight or nine range, probably, decided it wasn't needed, and so that uh, requirement of them was out the door. So I, 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 I'd like to see what those minutes said. Why, why did we throw that out at that time? And suddenly now, oh, not suddenly, but we now need that. It's just um, something there yeah. I don't understand. The only thing I can, and this is just, just a guess, at that time, you know, it probably wasn't needed. I mean, you know, um, <clears throat> you can, you've seen the way Laurel Canyon has exploded the last, you know, few years, but back then maybe, you know, it, it just wasn't needed at that time. But that's purely a guess on my part. So, but, but they were still going to have to take it down to clean it eventually, right? And, and refurbish the tank. Or Excuse whatever. me? They still have. They were still going to have to do that. Yeah, right? we're no still going to have to do that at some point. And you don't want to wait too long before it starts deteriorating. So its tank is what, 15, 16 years old now. Let me ask this question: What is a normal fee for like a design, complete design? Because this this uh, uh, conceptual design, if you if you just hired an uh, engineer, architect, or what are you going to call them to design it? What would be a normal fee for something like that? Because they would have to do a conceptual first, wouldn't they? Well, th this is the, the, the way where we, where we want to do this is they're going to do a conceptual plan. Now, this is also including the pump station as well, the booster station and tank. Um, they'll look at some of the, the hydraulics. They'll probably look at a new uh, model condition, um, look at the best option for locating the tank for the station, sizing the station. <laughs> And then once it, there may be some different options. I mean, it may be that, you know, we don't need a tank. Who knows? The modeling may show something else. Um, but the idea would be once they go through this conceptual design, they'll come through with a recommendation. And then whether, if we decide to go forward with it, then they can give us a more of a detailed, uh, you know, more. What, what do you think normally would you would expect to pay for if you just reached in a hat and got an engineering firm and said, why don't you design this water tank, the size that we're talking about here? I'm not, I, I mean, I mean, what, what kind of cost are we talking about on a tank estimate rough? I think the, in the master planning, if I remember right, the tank and pump station, I think a total cost, you know, construction, engineering, contingencies, I think was about $400,000, and I could be wrong, but I think that's the number I saw in the master plan. Okay. Could, uh, could you use this design to bid out the job? Well, what will happen is um, Black & Veatch will do the concept, come up with recommendations, move forward with the final design, and then it will, will go out to bid for, for construction. I, I guess my point would be is I respect Mr. Grant's position on the negotiation tact, you know, but mm -hmm. I guess at least the way I'm interpreting it is, is this is a conceptual design and just kind of keeps the process moving and then yeah. there's still opportunities for to leverage some negotiation. What I think what would happen is as part of this this conceptual design we'll probably have some more meetings with the uh, with the uh, well, developer and and you know, get them involved in more detail. I, I was going to ask if that conceptual design process could include some assessment of how much this uh, tank and booster station would benefit the developer uh, if they could be a part of it. Again, they're not committing to anything, but um, if it is, I know we can then decide whether we're going to move forward or not with actual plan, yeah. but I would like to have some, I uh, understand the system benefits, but also how this would possibly benefit that development and the building and future buildings projected there now. I understand he's putting in individual. Yeah, I mean, you, you could do a quick and dirty one saying anything above a certain elevation is not going to get water. So you could look at, you know, strictly, strictly that way is kind of a rough estimate, but. But something like that could be included in the conceptual design. Will they be reviewing those type things? Or the other concern I had is that we have been talking about possible annexations by developments. <laughs> Just uh, beyond that, um, 
which we could probably benefit from contributions to them if it's depending on the size of development, not that we would, would approve it or not, but mm -hmm. that was, you know, again, future negotiation. But I understand the conceptual design, you know, doesn't obligate us to anything, right. but I'd like to see uh, negotiation with the developer continue. And, oh, absolutely. And yeah. If that would, again, if that concept includes, mm -hmm. you know, how much that's benefiting from that one development. Yeah. The future, not current, but future. Okay. I want to protect, certainly want to protect people. Yeah, I'm not sure how you're living you, there now, but if it yeah. really benefits, allows a, the developer to, you know, ex expand, you know, by X amount. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how to quantify that, but I don't think there's a whole lot of lots left out there. Um, <clears throat> so, I don't know. You know I mean, about 100, 100 lots left out there, and I think then they're done. Okay. So. I would also like to ask Mr. Peppers if you would do a little research on the minutes or get someone to and and let's go back. I, I want I want a little better understanding of that before we just you know kind of forget it exactly how that got changed and maybe the discussion as to why it got changed. That would be good to know too. All right, anyone else? We have a uh, Ms. Wilson made the motion. Mr. Esty seconded the motion to approve this. Uh, any other discussion? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, discussion of possible action on water and sewer rates for Reformation Brewery. Uh, could, let me ask this question on that before we start. Could they not do a uh, process meter and a domestic meter so that we didn't have to worry about estimates of our getting in their records to determine how much water they were actually shipping out to deduct from from that. Uh, I mean, that's not yet. They didn't do that, and I don't know if that's the way it was done in Woodstock. Right now, they just have a, a two-inch. We're not domestic. worried about Woodstock now. Yeah. You know no, I'm, I'm just saying that. the way that it was done in the past, <laughs> and what we've done here is we have a, um, a two-inch domestic meter for their, for their use, and there's also a, a fire line in there as well, so. But, I mean, to me, it's, it would sort of make sense to use a, uh, a meter for the processed water and a meter for domestic. <coughs> and, you, and, and it's pretty, it's just a matter of reading meters then, looks like. But that's just me. I, I, you know, it doesn't matter that much to me. It's not a big <coughs> deal. But it just seemed like that would make sense. Uh, but anyway, okay. Any other discussion? Anybody have any questions about that? Uh, and just to clarify, they're asking for just a difference in, I mean, residentially compared to like an irrigation meter that what they, well, the what, what water the, they're not returning to the system they're using in their product. They, they um, asked for two things. They wouldn't pay for the, yeah, the sewer charge. Sewage charge. They asked for two things in their letter. They asked for a wholesale rate on the water, and they asked for a sewer credit on the amount of water that's used in their finished product because obviously not all the water that they're going to use that goes through that meter is going to the sewer. But we don't have wholesale rates, right? Excuse me? Do we have wholesale rates? Only to other jurisdictions. Only to other Only to other municipalities, bodies, correct. Not to other private. No. Yeah. I, don't, you know, I don't have a problem with deducting the amount of beer water they're shipping out, yeah. you know, knowing that it's not going in the sewer system. Mm -hmm. But um, I... I, I tend to agree. I mean, I, 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 I am in favor of that second part of the second request. Um, while the first request I understand, and, and it would be nice if we could offer that, I guess the water is going into the product and they're selling that product. So yeah. I can't really justify the, the city you know, getting a break for, for the water there, but have no problem uh, with, uh, you know, the, the discounting on, on what they're not returned to the sewer system okay. and I'd make a motion that we approve it for the second request. Okay. Uh, ask one thing. Mr. On our car washes, are, we don't give a wholesale rate on that either, do we? We, we don't give any, according private. to our records, we, <clears throat> yeah. excuse me, we don't have any wholesale yeah. private customers. Well, I think, I think we don't, if we aren't giving any of them one, we shouldn't start a precedent here. Anyone else? Mr. Grant made the motion. Second. Was it? Mr. Goodman seconded the motion. So just to make sure our minutes are clear, the motion is to grant them a credit 
towards the sewer sewer cost. credit based, based on production and the credit is what what it what is it what is it the, the, i mean how do you define your volume the credit is going to be based off of volume of shipped beer, beer beverage produced. Package yeah. produced package. okay and so you know, we'll have to develop an auditing process yeah. and form and all of that that we'll work through with finance. We'll, we'll just have to go down there every week or something. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to return to our As long as you go after five days. Okay. All right. We, we have a motion and a second. Anything else? Uh, Mr. Goodman seconded. Mr. Grant made the motion. Uh, Mr. Goodman seconded. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. All right, aye. thank you. <coughs> okay, uh, discussion and possible action to purchase 10.65 acres at uh, 530 Keith Drive from Keith Drive Investors for $80,000. Mr. Peppers? Motion to approve. Second. Second. <laughs> okay. uh, Mr. Grant made the motion. Ms. McGrew, I believe. First one I heard, I seconded the motion. Any other discussion? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. All members voting for the motion. See, that's how it's supposed to be done, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, under new business, uh, uh, Mr. Yon had, I believe, had requested that this was a, a council introduced topic, but since we knew about it beforehand, we just put on it a new business. We can also move it to our work session uh, after it's discussed here and then for the next session. Normally I would wait till the work session to, to bring this up, but I plan to be out of oh, town okay. yeah. during the work session. So I wanted to go ahead and bring it forward so that council members could think about it and the public had a chance to weigh in. And there is no hurry, there is no rush for this. So there's plenty of time. It can be voted on at the next voting session. But I was approached by members of the American Legion they're, if you're not familiar, their parking lot, they're down near the fairgrounds, and we use, we cross their parking lot to get to the pumping station. And I don't know exactly how much, but a fair amount of our traffic goes back and forth across their parking lot. And I think we do have an easement for that. They had asked, because uh, our parking lot was in bad shape, if we would participate in paving the parking lot, but they managed to come up with the money for the paving on their own. And they've got it paved and temporary striped, but they do not have the money. So they are asking, since we contribute to the wear and tear, if the city would be willing to contribute the topping and the permanent striping, which they tell me is their the quote they got is about $2,000. So I just wanted to bring this forward to y'all to think about. Uh, Mr. Peppers did tell me this has to be voted by council since it is doing public work on private property, but we do have we do use that private property for city business. So no, this is this is. Uh, is it already done? The work already the pave, done. The paving is already done. They've got the temporary striping in, but they still have steel and permanent striping, is what they've told me. Okay, I wouldn't have you. I wouldn't have any problem uh, with us helping on the if we actually have an easement through that. If it's a defined easement, you know, that would be the public benefit: a shared cost of maintenance of the easement. Yeah. I guess we need to know whether, uh, if we could find out if there is indeed a easement to that access and that pump station, which there probably is. I don't there, know. If there's not, we've taken one. <laughs> might have, might have to, We're might getting need, to the pump station. Need one anyway, don't we? We're I? crossing somebody's property. So. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I wouldn't have that. That was my exact question. I wouldn't have a problem if there is an easement and there's a benefit to the general public and all the taxpayers. Um, Without one, you know, I think we we're doping ourselves up to. You yeah. know, well, and, and if we're not, up. if there's not one, we should exchange it. We should have one. for the money, right? Yeah, right. exactly. We could do that. Yeah. Okay. So we'll bring that back up for discussion at the, the work session, and then any action we need to make on that after okay. that. Okay. Good enough. All right. Uh, let's see. Where are we here? <clears throat> Mayor's report. It's. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> very small. Oh, God, I've, uh, I've written all over this to where I can't hardly read some of it. So. Make it quick. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I was just going to tell you that the parks are pretty much all closed. As you know, we've uh, 
We've been keeping up with those. Our, our round the clock uh, leadership in the police department has been looking at all the parks and roads for us over the last few days. We know that we've got more rain coming, and so we're keeping our eyes on that. Um, uh, Mr. Hatabian and, and our folks with utility partners are trying to keep everything contained as it relates to water and sewer infrastructure, which is always difficult in flooding areas, but uh, we're trying to keep as much of that information on the, on the, the public side as possible. Ms. Thompson's working on social media posts for us, but um, right now all of our public streets are in pretty good shape, so that's good for us, um, but we will continue to update those uh, for the next few days as we continue to have rain. Uh, I think we got a foot and a half in the reservoir uh, yesterday. So, you know, all that we released to do the work on the reservoir has filled back up. So that's, that's, <laughs> so. Any questions? Issues? That was quick, man. Yeah, that was quick. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Mayor's Board, one thing is, uh, as most of, an, of us know, you know, we have to be cognizant of any time the legislature is in session here in Atlanta, and uh, we need to be very careful about some of the bills that may affect cities and uh, our rights to make decisions about certain things. Uh, sometimes they tend to push preemptive legislation that uh, seems to take our ability to, to control things on the local level. Well, there's one, and GMA has, has sent a sample resolution that I, I'm, I'm going to read. It's will take too long, and uh, and has to do with uh, building standards and designs. It's, it's a resolution opposing House Bill 302, preemption of local building design standards. Uh, whereas House Bill 302 would prohibit local governments from regulating building design elements in single or uh, double family dwellings, which could negatively impact economic development efforts and harm competitiveness, and whereas appropriate local design standards and land use policies create a diverse, stable, profitable, and sustainable residential development landscape, and whereas House Bill 302 is a bill that would undermine self-determination of citizens to establish community standards as illustrated by the following. Municipal and county officials are elected in part to make decisions about the look and feel of their communities, which fosters economic development, preserves the character of the communities, and municipalities and counties use design standards to ensure that the property values of surrounding property owners remain protected from in incompatible development. And House Bill 302 would severely erode the ability of all 538 Georgia cities and 159 counties to address unique and community-specific quality of life issues. Whereas county and municipal governments use building design standards to protect property values, attract high-quality builders, and block incompatible development. And whereas building design standards assure residents and business owners that their investments will be protected and that others who come behind them will be equally committed to quality. And whereas local governments spend a large amount of resources studying, surveying, crafting, and defining their vision and development strategies and design standards are an integral part of those endeavors to attract residents, businesses, and the much coveted trained workforce. And whereas development and redevelopment efforts should reflect the community and its vision while simultaneously creating a sense of place. And whereas county and municipal government officials are elected to make decisions about the look and feel of their communities and House Bill 302 would transfer that power from duly elected local leaders to outside groups with little or no stake in the future success of Georgia's municipalities, including real estate developers and home builders. And whereas building design standards neither discourage nor favor, favor affordable housing, nor prevent the availability of certain housing types as supporters of House Bill 302 purport. And whereas local uh, governments should have the ability to provide more affordable housing options without sacrificing their unique character or threatening economic growth. 
And whereas, although historic districts are protected in House Bill 302, which indicates an understanding that standards do in fact make sense, downtown overlays or other similar special zoning districts are not. And whereas local governments should be empowered to enforce building design standards to make today's thriving downtown tomorrow's historic district. <clears throat> and whereas by limiting the ability of local governments to enforce building design standards in single or double family dwellings, House Bill 302 would negatively impact quality of life issues, including economic growth and the safety and welfare of Georgia citizens. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city of Canton that this governing body voices its opposition to House Bill 302, preemption of local building design standards. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be delivered to members of the Cherokee County delegation and made available for distribution to the public and to the press this 22nd day of February 2019. Do you need a motion to adopt? Yes. I'll make the motion. Second. Ms. Wilson made the motion. Uh, Ms. McGrew seconded that motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed no. All members voting for the motion. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll make sure that this resolution and its unanimous adoption will be uh, transmitted to the Cherokee County and Canton uh, legislative delegation. Okay, we now will need, need to adjourn to executive session to discuss real estate and potential litigation. And, oh, oh I'm sorry, sure. Monday at 5. Public, public is welcome and encouraged to attend that to see what the thoughts are from an engineering standpoint. Yes. Had one already, yeah. Comments? Okay. And that will be here. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. We have a motion to adjourn to executive session. Second. Okay. Mr. Grant seconded. Mr. Goodman made the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Coming back out. I'm not coming back out.